Hi, Adam. Hi, how are you? I'm Simon. Simon, nice to meet you. Tell me about what you... Oh, go on, you start. I've always worked on DNA and how it's repaired. Over the years, we've, we've um, become to appreciate the fact that cancers frequently are driven by an inability or a misrepair of damage. Given that it's the blueprint of life, it's actually quite unstable. It's constantly attacked. The crazy thing is that a DNA in one of your cells, and you have billions of cells, will experience anywhere between 70 and 100,000 DNA damages a day. And any one of those could, if you don't correct it, could give rise to a mutation that may be the, the, the starting point for loss of a cell's ability to control itself. And that would be a potential Beginning initiating of... event. So we work on the mechanisms that try to maintain the integrity of DNA. And we know that if you inherit defects in DNA repair processes, then you can have a very a significantly elevated risk of developing cancer. If you inherit a, a defect in a gene or a mutation in a particular gene, that might predispose you to having uh, a tumor later on in life. I have that in my family, yes. Yes, so you down do. The female line, yeah, there's... I know it sounds strange, because obviously it's a completely different tumor type, but mutations that predispose to breast cancer uh, in, in, in women can also lead to increased predisposition to brain cancers. So why do you use worms, then, in your research? The real benefit is, is that they have a very short life cycle, so they propagate from a single cell all the way up to an adult in about 36 hours. You can study things, we can do genetics with them. Faster, yes. Much faster, they're very, very small. We have to manipulate them under microscopes. They don't have a sophisticated neural system that experiences the equivalent of a distress pain. or pain. Exactly. Yeah. So we're trying to reduce the amount of large animal usage by using these model systems. Did you know anything about cancer before you walked into the A&E with, you, with yours? I did know about cancer, not yeah. a huge amount, not yes. as much as I know now. My wife is an oncologist. My brother-in-law is a researcher yes. into cancer, and in particular, brain cancers, immunotherapy and wow. the likes. So I learned quickly. Prior to my diagnosis, I knew little, yes. other than it's a scary word. With your books, for example, what are you hoping to achieve? It was to earn money, but it, there was no plan. It fell out of my head and people laughed. And There's a lot of humour and, you know, the way that you balance, you know, what is a, a very difficult topic. Obviously, what you've been through and what other people who've been through and anybody. I was given a yeah. death sentence. But you're here and it's fabulous. I'm yeah? still on death row, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really believe that? I was given statistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good at maths. Yes, I get yes. statistics. I was told people with my diagnosis have about a 5% chance of making two or three years. Yes. I'm now at five years. Yeah. The data for statistics is, is too sparse yeah. to, for, for patterns to form anymore. So I've fallen off the end. Yeah. Take each day as it comes. There's no other way of dealing with it.